All right, this is the Epiphone SG. This is a friend of mine's guitar. He's had it for a while. It's kind of been in the closet. This is the back side. Just kind of giving you an overview of it. It actually plays really good. Super smooth neck. Feels good. Frets feel good. Tunes nicely. Holds tune. Now we're going into the sound sample. Sounds pretty good to me. Just gotta figure out what's going on with this pickup. Okay, let me dive in more. Alright, we got this SG here. It's my buddy's. Um, he let me borrow it just to kind of help him play it and you know, it's always good to have something new uh, to play and, and that kind of thing. And so luckily I am in that spot today with this guitar. Um, but I pulled it out of the case and was just going to play a little bit with the, with the looper here. And it wasn't working. I'm like, what the heck? So now we get to kind of dive in here and, and see what's going on. Let me clean it up a little bit while we're at it. I noticed that the jack um, is a little bit wobbly, so we're going to be tightening that up. Um, I think ultimately it's just the battery is dead. It has active pickups, so um, let's see what it sounds like. Let's 
see if I can get it to come through here. So it does come through. It does come through, but it's, uh, the master is three quarters of the way up, the volume's all the way up, the gain is three quarters of the way up, and so that's just way, way, way high. And that's something going on with it. It plays good, everything's fine there, um, but that's that's what I'm running into. So it's also like that one's on, but I'm not hearing this one. So this must be the active one. Um, I'm not 100% sure how all that works. Still trying to figure it out, but anyway, let's uh, turn it over here and get to work. Turn that off. I like to keep the volume down just in case. Looks like it's a half or a 14 mil. Now, as you can see, the finish is cracked there, so that's probably why it's not sitting flush. It must have some special strap for this. I've not seen one quite like that. Anyway. I did take this cover off and uh, to be able to give you the sound sample just backtracked a little bit here so all the screws are there they're right here in my little box I'm trying to loosen so it's got some foam here and then the back tray so I'm assuming we can just take this out Probably go get my tester and even test that. But I got a new one here. Seems like the easiest thing to do. Being very gentle with everything. Hopefully this will make all the difference.
Hopefully that's it. That's the volume all the way down. It still doesn't seem like this top. Um, so maybe there is an issue with the uh, so this is the active. This is going to be the, the standard pickup. So we'll have to see what's going on there. So here I am actually trying to put everything back together once I've determined that the neck pickup does work through testing, you know, using resistance on my tester there. So we know the pickup's working, we know the wiring works, so the pick guard can go back on. The EMG is really cool because it actually has a plug, so it just literally plugs right in. There's no soldering. I'm trying to do my best to not mar the pick guard Looks like somebody's pushed that through before, and it just is too much. So I end up taking out those pieces. And then it fits on there real nice. Just making sure the wiring's tucked in. That's not going to hit the screws that adjust the pickups. I like to keep all my parts and pieces in a one plastic bag. Also, there is a screw underneath the bridge saddles. So I wanted to make sure to get that one on there before I put that bridge on.
that bridge won't actually stay on there, but so we got to flip the guitar back over. But I am going to go ahead and screw the pick guard down. I like to go into the reverse direction first until I feel the screw click down in the proper orientation in the hole and then start tightening it so that way we're less likely to strip it out. I'm just kind of getting all the screws in there not fully tightening them yet in case the pit guard has to move. I really like that Stumax screwdriver. It's got like a a handle on the top where it fits in your palm and that uh, spins freely and so it's just it's really nice to use And now just, just tighten them all. They all fit real good, so. Apologize, you can hear the cat in the background. Watson smiling. He's a good dog. So now we're looking at doing the testing side of things. I got some test leads from Stumac. You know, you probably get these also at Harbor Freight or whatever. They weren't crazy expensive, so we just went ahead and bought it since I get free shipping through there. Um, but one of the wires was actually taped up with painter's tape. Um, and that's the connection, the hot connection for the active pickup. So we'll be, there is some heat, sh heat shrink on that wire uh, that we're gonna move up, put over the solder area. I'll melt that down so it's protected. <coughs> Excuse me. But I didn't wanna just leave it with painter's tape on there. It was actually kinda tricky to get off. But the solder looked good. Now you can see me moving that tubing up to put it over there. That way we don't hit any, you know, grounds or something like that. That'd be bad.
I do move the camera closer here in just a few minutes so we can actually see in the uh, potentiometer cavity there. I'm more or less just trying to think about how I'm going to test this. Like where to connect to where, where to put the camera so you can see what I'm doing. The, uh, the cover for that cavity does not sit very flush. So I'm just trying to smooth that out just a little bit or clean it out if there's any dirt. It didn't even actually leave any kind of scratch marks or anything. So, you know, it may not have actually done anything. But I'm using just a little tiny flat blade screwdriver. And you can see I have my headphone in and I've got some music playing, so it seems quiet in the video, but tend to work better when I have some music in the background, so. Now we're gonna move the camera. I'm using the light lead for hot, black lead for ground, red lead for another hot if needed. So the two lower pots are for the active, the 250s. So I'm just trying to pass that hot over to the neck pickup to see if we can't get it to work. I did notice that the ground isn't completed for both sides, so I'm trying to make sure that there's a ground also. But I think I determined in here that that's fine. The neck pickup is grounded to the saddle, I do believe. So it is grounded, but they're not all connected. So that might be something that I'll fix. And so to test it here, I gotta lift the guitar up, make sure the switches are on. Um, the volume knobs are all the way up, tone knobs are all the way up. And then I'm just going to tap on the pickup, see if we have power. And we do. And that is the net pickup. That works. Shit. I'm going to test it again here uh, so the ground wasn't needed per se. Trying to see if there's another way I want to try and hook it up. I'm flipping the switch. I'm trying to get it to hook on that side of the switch there. And then to the I think it's the middle post of the potentiometer, the volume. 
to see if we can get that hot the way it should be. And it was not. Nope. Still nothing. I think what it comes down to is that the two wires that are labeled there are actually needing to be run. So that red wire needs to go to the pot from the switch and then the to the jack also needs to go to the jack. And I think that'll get it working. And so none of that's working. The switch is not not really doing anything. For the most part, I think the switch is basically bypassed directly from the active pickup. So it looks like it was actually wired to only run the one pickup. It may not have ever been finished firing up that second one, so that's what we're going to do. Now if I wanted to further test this, I would have stripped out the, the red to pots line and then the gray to jack. Once those are stripped out, I would run a uh, ground and then also run the, the leads to the appropriate place to see if that fixes it. And once I did that, then I would know for sure, you know, what I need to do, you know, with soldering and things like that. So the soldering is going to be coming up in the next video. I'm kind of building up to that. I did just get the soldering kit in the mail. Um, so maybe I can show you a quick video of that or something so you can see what I'm working with. But you can see that worked. So we got the pot going to the pickup now. I think that's just feeding off of the uh, the hot for the ENG. So yeah, this is where we're at. Determining that everything works. And pretty much everything's there. We just gotta determine how we're gonna wire it. And then actually do that. I'm trying to make sure that the switch is... I was actually going to try and pull the switch out so I could look at it a little better because this left side, the way the wires are connected and I think it's their ground like that makes it really hard to see. I'm just trying to check the joints to make sure that they're soldered appropriately that nothing is connected like it shouldn't be. Howdy friends. Just want to do a quick update here uh, to kind of finish off this video. This shows that we have got the guitar working, the tone pots, the volume pots, the switch all works. I just wanted to kind of show you how I had it set up here. The active pot pickup is uh, plugged in to the battery. And then the amp is turned on. Everything's turned on here. And essentially what I did is these were labeled uh, two pots, two jack. And it was just cut. The So the whole net pickup did not work. So what we have to do is 
rewire it. And with these leads, I've done that um, until my new, until the new, uh, until the new wiring comes in. Uh, that's going to be on like the 23rd, today's 18th, so we got another week. You know, the shipping might take a little longer, and that's fine. Um, but I wanted to get this video out because it's kind of been hanging for a minute while I figured out what kind of wire I needed and stuff like that because I actually got wire, but I got the wrong type. I have more of the vintage Gibson traditional style uh, wire, and this has more like modern wiring, and I really like the style, how it has the uh, single conductor with the ground, so it's shielded to some degree, um, which is really cool. I do have a 25 foot roll of that coming from Stumac. I also have some plastic insulator short pieces of wire coming in uh, that I'll use to do these shorter runs right here to get this fully uh, set up. So, with all that being said, and I really appreciate you hanging on and, and watching this whole long video, uh, but I hope you have found it uh, at least somewhat interesting and useful. So, we are currently on the, uh, the middle circuit. And let's see here. Everything is currently at 10. So we should be able to hit both pickups and it should sound. And it did, let me turn it up for you. That's the uh, bridge pickup, the active pickup. And then the neck pickup. A big difference huh all right so we're gonna go to the treble that's the bridge that's the neck it did not sound and then we're on the bridge so this is volume down volume up Tone down, tone up. All right, rhythm circuit. That's our neck. Definitely got a little hum there. Uh, that's volume all the way up, volume down. Probably why they disconnected it because it's humming and tone down volume all the way up so that's interesting the hum goes away when the tone is down I may have to do some rewiring on that capacitor because it's wired to the pot instead of being wired over here where it's wired to the from volume to tone so. <clears throat> so that's where we're at we got it working and we'll go from there thank you for watching Thank <laughs> you.